what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest project Elixir ROM yeah I know I'm a little bit late to actually make this ROM video but yeah let's just do it anyway so this project Elixir ROM is the latest one the Android 12 based and the build version is 1.2 of this project Elixir specific ROM the build date here is 20 December 2021 as you can see from here and this actually includes the GApps I'll put all these links of this telegram post and the download links and stuff will be present in the description and the specific version of the orange box recovery that I have used to flash this ROM will be present right here in the screen somewhere and of course I'll link everything of those below too so right now let me just show you the about section this is how it looks like we have the project elixir logo right here and the android version is again android 12 and the project elixir version shows as 1.2 the device name is of course redmi note 7 pro the device maintainer is sure of because same developer who makes the pixel plus ui for the redmi note 7 pro so huge thanks to him and the team of the project elixir they have done an amazing job again and we have the security patch as latest of december 5th 2021 and we have the stock kernel as the azure killer plus kernel and here is the slnx status by default it's enforcing in the system panel we have the gboard as a default keyboard and the live translate feature we also have and let me go back from here we have the gestures and in here we have the double tap to check phone you can enable it if you want to the swipe direct screenshot is of course there and that particularly works fine there is a shared edit and delete options as you are noticing also let me show you if you are somewhere where there is a lot of scrolling space if you take a screenshot you have the capture more feature and if you click on the capture mode you can take more parts of the screenshot and you can edit them as well and when you click on edit and you can make a doodle out of it and you can change the colors and stuff so all these things are there and you can save it or share it from right here and we have the press and hold power button for the assistant and we have the one-handed mode too that particularly works perfectly fine you can also change this one-handed mode to show your notifications and stuff just like this this is very cool you just swipe down on the pill bar that actually does that one-handed mode kind of feature and we have the system navigation gestures and here we have the full screen navigation and the gesture navigation is the full screen navigation and we have the two button and three button navigation as well if you go into the settings we have the swipe to invoke assistant then the left edge right edge customization and you can have the sensitivity adjustment too but as of right now i would say you don't actually have the gesture bar size changing option that is particularly missing i would say from here but you can swipe up from these corners that will bring you the google assistant so let's just try the google assistant hey google as you can see google assistant perfectly works with this feature and yeah the voice trigger is actually working here no issues whatsoever let me try one more time okay google as you can see again it does bring the google assistant with the voice trigger so google assistant is perfectly working no issues with that we have the full screen gestures too that actually hides this pill bar as well but you can anyway use the full screen gestures so that feature actually works but in this project elixir rom in the redmi note 10 pro what i have seen is that going back and stuff was very weird like sometimes these gestures were not working but here that problem is not there it is working perfectly and we have the quickly open camera and stuff that is working fine so that's all about the gestures and here i would say there is no system updater as of right now at least so this is how the home screen actually looks like and yeah this is how it looks like we have the widgets let me actually show you you do have the android 12's clock widgets and if i bring this clock right here let's assume i'm gonna add this particular clock and yeah right now as you can see this looks beautiful i would say the clock actually looks pretty cool and it looks cute in my frank opinion and it has this rotational date and stuff looks very beautiful again so yeah these kind of android 12 clock widgets are there and the clock app actually is from android 12 of course and even the calculator app if i show you that so this is how the calculator app looks like looks very beautiful everywhere the accent color that you are noticing is adapted from the wallpaper itself so if you change the wallpaper these accent colors will change of course from here and talking about the stock launcher well this is specifically a pixel launcher and it doesn't have the double tap to like sleep anywhere in the home screen or stuff like that because this is a pixel launcher so no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but it has fairly good amount of things like the google now kind of page or the google discover page appears on the left side of the home screen swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app just like this that particularly works perfectly fine swiping down anywhere gets you to the notification and the quick setting panel and this is how the quick setting panel looks like in the white theme and we have the double tap to sleep and stuff i'll show you the customizations later on but first let me show you the fingerbit scanner speed over here so if i tap the fingerbit scanner and as you can see it unlocks let me try one more time so as soon as i tap it does this kind of animation if you're noticing up close 
a couple more times. I'm tapping the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it unlocks. Let me try one more time. So as you can see, it is fairly fast unlocking speed and even the animation I'm just loving over here. I don't have the always on display turned on, but why would you have always on display over here on the Redmi Note 7 Pro? I mean, this device has a IPS display, so the always on display feature will actually drain the battery a lot. But talking about the quick setting panel, this is how again it looks like we have the edit power menu and we have the settings panel. So in the power menu, we have this restart option. So if you tap on restart, as you can see, we have the advanced reboot. You can directly reboot to the recovery or something if you want that. So these things are there and let me show you what toggles that I have added. We have the Wi-Fi mobile data. The mobile data is disabled because I don't have a SIM card in the device yet and the auto rate and stuff is there. Battery saver is there. Vaulty calling and stuff again is should be working perfectly fine. And we have the dark theme. The Android 12 screen recorder is there with that. You can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time. Not a problem with that. And we have the hotspot, the do not disturb, the data saver, the nearby share and we have the nightlight mode as well. The nightlight should be working perfectly fine here. As you can see, it's making the display yellowish. So yeah, it does work and we have the Google Home controls. So from here, you can control your smart home lights. As you can see right now, I can turn on this light. You might have noticed a little bit of difference over there. And we have the FPS counter too. So if you enable that, as you can see on the top left, we have the FPS and yeah it should work perfectly fine as you can see right now it is having 59.8 that means it's 60 pretty much so yeah the fps counter is working perfectly fine here and if i go into the settings panel we have some more things essence and stuff this is where you find the customizations of this rom if you want to skip this part you can check out the timestamps from the seek bar and if we have the status bar items we have the headset bluetooth extra icons you can enable or disable particularly and we have the vibrate on toggle touch then the 4g icon you can enable and the vaulty and view wifi icon again you can choose over here the double tap to sleep is there and from the status bar double tap to sleep is not a problem as you can see and we have the clock options again and we have the am pm style changing option then the date and stuff and we have the battery styles you can change that to these many icons yes there is no r and l or the big circle kind of battery icon those are simply missing but that's fine and we have the battery percentage you can change it to next to the icon or inside the icon then the battery estimates and the brightness control is there so you can slide a finger on the status bar to actually adjust the brightness just like this as i'm doing it so yeah this is a very handy feature i like it pretty much and we have the show brightness slider and the show brightness slider in quick setting panel and the show brightness slider on bottom and stuff these are there so if you expand the quick setting panel as you can see the brightness slider actually appears on the bottom so this is very cool and in the serious part we have these many things and if you swipe to the right you go to the lock screen then we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen then the toggle torch with the lock screen long press power button that is also there and the charging info also shows up in the lock screen and next inside system we have the vibrate on connect then the call waiting and disconnect and the annoying notification you can turn it off or on in the mist settings we have the enable advanced restart then the fingerprint success vibration and stuff is there and the playback control volume rocker is there so that's all about the customizations of this rom and in the battery settings let me show you this is how it looks like we have to turn on the light when charging this is for this notification light particularly which is present on the note 7 pro that actually works fine and we have the battery usage from right here you can see and we have the battery server and stuff this is how the battery percentage looks like now let's talk about the battery life a little bit. I have been testing it with the Aku battery app. And with that, I would say you can get about four plus hours of screen on time because this device is actually very old. I have not changed the battery hardware itself. So you can get four to four and a half hours of screen on time depending on your battery's health. And inside health, as you can see, my battery capacity has dropped quite a lot. It shows 2940, so about 3000 mAh of actual raw performance. So yeah, with that, you can get about four plus hours of screen on time, I would say. And yes, 18 watt fast charging should work perfectly fine here. No issues with that. But yeah, the standby time should be good enough, I would say, better than the Android 11 ROMs pretty much, I would say. Inside sound and vibration, we have these things like the screenshot sound and stuff. You can disable, we have the Mi Audio Dirac. You can turn it on from right here and from here, you can choose the youth edition and with that the sound quality via the headphone jack should be great also sound quality via the bluetooth and stuff should be good enough let me go back we have the screen locking sound charging sound vibration etc vibration and haptics you can change all those things and then of course the volume panel looks like this you can change the profile you can put it to general or something from right here and it does give you a haptic feedback once you change these let me go back we have the wallpapers and styles and this is where you can change the wallpapers from here and let me show you you get these many wallpapers right out of the box 
you can change them from right here i have been using this particular wallpaper from here now let's talk about the accent colors you can get the accent colors like to the basic colors or the wallpaper colors whatever you like also you can get to the settings from the home screen by just tapping and holding in the blank area and go to the wallpapers and styles and from here we have the dark theme and the themed icons both are working perfectly fine also the app grid you can change from right here up to 5 by 5 grid and in the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive brightness and inside lock screen we have the always show time and info this is the always on display so while you have the always on display turned on it will look like this and even the double tap to wake is not working here for some reason let me just press the power button and this is how the lock screen looks like of course we have the big and bold like this clock and it looks beautiful again and with that the unlocking animation looks beautiful again we have the screen timeout changing option you can change it up to 30 minutes if you want to let me go back from here and here we have the dark theme and we have the font size display size the dpi changing option the night light the colors are set to saturated because i have changed it i will recommend you guys using the saturated mode prevent accidental wake up or the pocket detection is also there and the double tap to wake is there but again if you have the always on display turned on the double tap to wake sometimes goes buggy so i will recommend not using the always on display here even without that the double tap to wake should be working fine as you can see now here inside security we only have the fingerprint option and if you go into the settings of it we have the quick unlock option and the scramble pin layout and stuff but of course there is no face unlock or something if you are willing to have those well in android 12 those things are yet to be added so in most android 12 roms i haven't seen uh, android 12 rom which has a face unlock in any device as of right now i would say so yeah we only have the fingerprint unlock no app lock no face unlock are present over here in any android 12 rom so that's fine now here is how it looks while charging the device. Now let's talk about a few more things about the camera and stuff. Well this ROM does not have any kind of stock camera I guess. But I have installed the Gcam and this is the Gcam Unix. This is working perfectly fine I would say. Yes it is a slight bit laggy experience that I have been having. But yeah taking a picture in the night sight mode as you can see this is how it works. And even if you are noticing the camera delay or something. This is how the delay should be. As you can see it takes the pictures fairly fast not a problem also i have installed the gcam go sometimes as you can see the animations are a bit choppy here and there but with the gcam go again you can take pictures and yeah the front camera and stuff everything is working we have this beautify kind of mode and yeah that should be working fine so even gcam go should be working great and if you are taking a photo with the gcam go too as you can see it takes the photos really fast no issues whatsoever even the video and stuff should be working yeah as you are noticing even the front camera video yeah that should be working too so yeah pretty much you have to install separately this gcam and stuff i'll put the links for those in the description don't worry and talking about the ir duster and stuff let me show you one by one the ir duster is working fine again as you are noticing right here the ir duster is not a problem it is working perfectly fine again the DRM info of the device stays L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. And if you are worried about banking apps, well it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So banking apps will not be a problem on this device. Now if you are worried about the performance, I would say the performance should be decent and you can get pretty much good amount of like daily driving performance out of this. Here are the Android Geekbench score of this particular ROM. Opening apps and stuff is not a problem, it opens pretty fast as you are noticing. So yeah, and switching between apps is not a problem either. It switches pretty fast as you can see. And if you wanna see the recent panel, this is how it looks like. We have the screenshot, the select option and stuff. And you can go all the way to the left to actually clear all the apps from memory, just like this. And if you want to head into the split screen and stuff, you can just tap here. Then we have the split screen, pin app and the freeform options. And here are the Android 2 and Geekbench score and the CPU stress test on this ROM. Yes, for some reason the Android 2's GPU is showing zero in the Redmi Note 7 Pro. I'm not really sure why I have used the latest Android 2 benchmark app. But yeah, that's how it is with both the normal Android 2 and the light one. Same thing happens. So that's pretty much it guys about the Project Elixir ROM on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.